Do you love the Lord? Do I love the Lord? Have we left our first love? Some might say, I think I have. I don't really have that simple passion for Jesus like I used to. I have to admit, I do make up excuses as to why I can't make it to church this Sunday or this Wednesday or whatever, or why I can't read the Bible. You know, I'm not really living as I ought to. And I have to admit, you might say, that I have been being pulled toward the world lately, and the world has been looking far more attractive to me and the things of the Lord, far less so. Maybe you're leaving your first love. So what do you do? Well, Jesus gives you his prescription for renewal. He gives you the three R's of getting your first love back. They are remember, repent, and repeat. The word repeat is not there, but he says do the first works quickly. Remember, repent, repeat. First, Jesus says, remember from where you have fallen, or literally keep on remembering. So here's what you need to do. Let's just like take a little journey now in our uh, imagination, and let's remember. Remember when you were at your highest point of love for Christ. Is it tonight? If it is, praise the Lord. Maybe we'd say, well, it's probably 30 years ago, maybe. Or maybe 10 years ago or five years ago. Well, think about it. It's important to remember it. And memory is such an amazing thing, isn't it? How you can just be transported into the past. For, for me, a scent can do it. Like copper tone lotion. Still smells the same. You put it on, I'm like, I'm back in the 50s again. It's like, whoa. Or, you know, it might be a song you hear on the radio. You know, with a lot of these songs that have been being played, you go to the uh, Big Tent Revival website, and they're playing a lot of the songs from the old Jesus movement days, you know. And as I was listening to those songs, I feel like I've gone back in time. Well, I remember it. And, I, and then I walk by a mirror and, well, whoa, you know. What happened? Well, you've gotten a little bit older. That's what's happened. But you remember, first you remember where you were before. Why do you need to remember? Because you can't find your way back to a place you have forgotten. Remember from where you have fallen, and then you need to repent. Repent. Change your direction. If you haven't been walking with the Lord as closely as you ought to, take practical steps and do something. And then number three, you need to repeat. Do the first works quickly. Listen, get back to basics. Check this out. You never outgrow the need for the basic disciplines of the Christian life. You know, you never come to a point where I no longer need to read the Bible. You know, I remember when I first met Pastor Chuck, and at that point he had probably been a Christian, I don't know, 30 years or something back in 70. It was a long time. Especially to someone who had been a Christian like 30 minutes. And... I asked him once, Pastor Chuck, how long have you known the Lord? Oh, you know, 30 years, something like that. And I said, whoa. I just thought when you're, you know, you must just walk on water. You just, you don't even drive. You just are transported from one place to another. You know? <laughs> well, it's been over 30 years for me now. Don't, don't let this scare you off. But, uh, you know, you, you look back on it and you say, there's certain things you never outgrow. You never outgrow your need to get into the Word of God each and every day. You never outgrow your need for a prayer life. You never outgrow your need to be a vibrant and regular part of a fellowship. You never outgrow these things. And I'll meet Christians who are talking about all the problems they're having. Oh man, I'm struggling a lot with this sin. And I've been falling in this area a lot. And I just don't know what's going wrong. Everything's, you know, shutting down. Wait a second, let me ask you a question. W did you read your Bible today? No. Yesterday? Uh, no. Day before? No. Last month? No. But I think I heard a couple verses quoted in a sermon recently. I'm not sure, but what about your prayer life? Have you prayed? Well, not really. And I mean, you're having a breakdown in the disciplines, and you're wondering why you're not doing spiritually. Remember from where you have fallen, Jesus says. Repent and have a really big emotional experience. No, he says, remember, repent, and repeat. You might have an emotional experience. You might have no emotional experience. It's not about that. It's about the just living by faith. And just doing this each and every day. And some days you feel it, and some days you don't feel it. And you just get up and say, I know that Christ has come and taken residence on my heart. I know I'm living the way I ought to be living. And I'm just going to do what God wants me to do. And you just press on. And pretty soon days turn to weeks and months to years. And you look back and you thank the Lord 
for all that time you've spent getting closer to him and change is happening in your life no you're not perfect you're not flawless yes you have a lot to learn but what a great journey it is because we're all getting old but we christians we're getting old but we're getting closer to the lord and we're becoming more like him And we're getting closer to the day when we will see him face to face. What does the non-believer have to say? They're getting old. Well, you know, I'll fix it. Just a nip here, a tuck there, a stretch over there, and plump up this and shrink that and uh, whatever. I mean, I'm, you know, whatever. But you're not going to change anything. It's still the same you inside. But when you're walking with the Lord, you see that transformation in your character. And I ask you, have you left your first love? And if you have, why don't you come back to it tonight? What a great way to start these meetings. But, you know, there might be some of you that have joined this who have never made a commitment to Jesus Christ. This might be your first time in any kind of a church service. You were brought by a friend. And you've never asked the Lord to forgive you of your sin. You don't even know what that means. Here's what I'm saying to you. All of us have sinned. All of us have broken God's commandments. There's no exceptions. We all fall short of his glory, the Bible says. But 2,000 years ago, God loved you so much, he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to willingly go to a cross and die for your sin and for my sin. He came to pay a debt he did not owe because we owed a debt we could not pay. And then three days later, Jesus Christ rose again from the dead. And now he is alive and he's here with us right now in this tent. And he's knocking at the door of our heart, our life. And he's saying, if you'll hear my voice and open the door, I will come in. And I ask you tonight, have you ever asked Christ to come into your life? You can't live off somebody else's faith. God has no grandchildren, only sons and daughters. How do you become a child of God? The Bible says, for as many as received him, he gave them the power to become sons of God. The Bible says his spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. So it comes when you put your faith in Christ and say, Lord, I'm sorry for my sin. I turn from that now and I choose to follow you. Have you done that yet? Because until you do, you're going to have a big old hole in your heart. That nothing this world offers is going to fill. Drugs won't fill it. Alcohol won't fill it. Material things won't fill it. Experiences won't fill it. Sex won't fill it relationships won't fill it, your career won't fill it, even religion and ritual won't fill it, or even morality. There has to come a moment where you say, God, I realize I was created to know you, and I want to turn from my sin and ask Christ to come into my life. And then, friend, you can know with absolute assurance that when you die, you will go to heaven. And you can know with certainty that when Christ comes back again, you will be ready to meet the Lord. Do you know that tonight? If not, would you like to? In a moment, we're going to pray. And I'm going to give you an opportunity to get right with God. An opportunity to ask Jesus Christ to come into your life and be your Savior and Lord. Or an opportunity to come back to the Lord if you've fallen away. So if you need to make this commitment or recommitment, you be thinking about what you're going to do as we pray right now. Okay? Let's all bow our heads for a word of prayer. Father, I pray now that you will speak to every person here, every person listening. Help them to see that your word is true and help them to come to you and receive your forgiveness, we pray. When our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed and we're praying, how many of you would say tonight, Greg, I want Jesus Christ to come into my life. I want my sin forgiven. I want to know that when I die, I will go to heaven. I want this hole in my heart filled. Pray for me. I'm ready to say yes to Jesus. If that's your desire, if you want Christ to come into your life and forgive you of your sin, if you want to go to heaven when you die, would you lift your hand up wherever you're sitting, and I'm going to pray for you tonight. Just lift it up where I can see it. God bless you. God bless you. God bless each one of you. Anybody else, just lift your hand up. Let me pray for you. God bless you. How about there in the overflow area? You want to make this commitment to Christ? I can see out there. Raise your hand up if you want to make this commitment or recommitment tonight. Just lift your hand up. Anybody else? God bless you there in the very back. God bless you. Yes. Over here on the side, God bless you as well. On, on the other side too. 
Well, our heads are still bowed. Maybe some of you would say, you know what, I, I've fallen away. I've backslid. Now, I've left my first love big time, but I'm ready to come back to it again. Would you pray for me? I need to come back to the Lord. If that's you, would you lift your hand up and let me pray for you tonight. God bless you. God bless all of you. Lord, I thank you for each one of these, and I ask you to give them the strength to stand up and follow you from this night forward, that this would be a night they can mark in time where they made a commitment that meant a lot, that meant everything. So help them now to make that stand and follow you, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, <clears throat> everyone that Jesus calls, he calls openly, publicly. And we're going to do the same in a moment. I'm going to ask if you raise your hand with me during that last moment of prayer, saying you want Christ to come into your life, or saying that you want to come back to the Lord. I'm going to ask that when our group leads us in this next song, that you would get up out of your seat, step into the nearest aisle, and walk down here to the front. And when you get here, I'm going to lead you in a prayer. I'm going to ask that nobody leave right now because it creates a distraction. I'm going to ask my Christian friends to remain in their seat and be praying for these that are making this commitment. So listen, if you raise your hand, even if you did not, but you want your sin forgiven, you want to know that when you die, you will go to heaven, you want that void inside of you filled, you want to be ready for the Lord's return? Or you've fallen away from the Lord and you want to come back to Him again tonight? As the group sings, I want you to get up out of your seat, step into the aisle, walk down here to the front, and I'll lead you in a prayer of commitment when you get here. Get up and start coming right now and make your public stand for Jesus Christ. Set before the now, living or dying, blessing or cursing. I know the time has come around to turn from your fighting, rest in this mercy. Choose life that you might live. a choice. To not say yes is to say no. Jesus said, you're for me or against me. There might be a few more of you that need to make this choice, to choose life, to choose Christ. God says, behold, I set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Choose life that you might live. He tells us the choice and then tells us what choice to make. Here's the right choice. Here's the wrong one. Have you made that choice for Christ yet? They're going to sing this chorus through one last time. And if there's anybody else that wants to make this commitment or recommitment to Christ, you get up and come and join these folks here. And we're going to lead you in a prayer. Anybody else in this final moment, if you're going to come, come now. Trust the Lord with all your heart, with all of your soul. Thank you. 
God. Hey, listen. Well, praise the Lord. Let's thank the Lord for that. Yeah. Praise the Lord. God bless all of you. In a moment, I'm going to lead you in a prayer, and this is a prayer of asking Christ to come into your life. I'm going to ask you to pray this prayer out loud after me and mean it. God will hear you. Just a word to those listening by radio or, or listening on the internet. You can pray this prayer as well, and God will hear you too. So as I pray this prayer, I want you to pray it out loud after me, okay? Let's all bow our heads now. Pray this after me now. Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. But you died on the cross and shed your blood for every sin I have ever committed. I turn from my sin now. I ask you to come into my life and be my Savior and my Lord and my God and my friend. I want to follow you, Jesus, from this night forward in a first love relationship. Thank you for calling me and accepting me and forgiving me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you, God. Praise God. God bless each one of you. God bless. Amen. Hey, listen. All of you that, um, all of you that just came forward, we want to meet with you for just a few moments. We want to give to you a Bible and some other materials that are going to help you in this commitment or recommitment you've made. Now, right up this middle aisle, Garrett, there's a guy standing there. Garrett, raise up your hand. That's my man, Garrett Beeler, there. And Garrett's going to lead you. Where are you taking him, Garrett? He's just going to take you out there just a couple of feet over there to a little area where we're going to give you a Bible. He's going to talk to you a little bit about this commitment you've made. So if you would, all of you standing here, you just need to kind of go down this middle aisle, go straight out and follow Garrett. And he's going to lead you right out that way. And your friends are waiting for you. Right out there. Just come in this way. Go right out that way. Just right like that. There you go. God bless you guys. Just like that. Yeah. Right out that back there. Well, the Lord is good. Let's all stand up. Uh, tomorrow night I'll, I'll be speaking again and, and I'm going to be sharing a message that will be, you know, pretty evangelistic. And so this would be a great opportunity for you to bring out someone that does not know the Lord. And let's pray for a great work of the Holy Spirit, not only tomorrow night, but for all the nights that we're here. And God bless you guys. How exciting it is to see the Lord at work, and we're just waiting for tomorrow night to see a further work of the Lord here in our midst. And so bring a friend, and let's just join together and just look to the Lord to really bless abundantly.